like to welcome you to this August 5th meeting of the Course Canada ISD Board of Trustees. This is a scheduled workshop and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby for audience for guests and follow the instructions on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budget, develop policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to solve individual problems. That is the responsibility of our superintendent. The board believes that we must educate every child, give every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and to provide a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values. We thank you for your interest in the students at CISD. Board Trustee Ms. Castillo is not feeling well today, so she will not be in attendance. We do have six trustees in attendance, so we do have a quorum. At this time, we are going to go into closed session as permitted by Section 551001 of the Texas Government Code. Do we have any action items from closed session? I have a motion to make. I make the motion that we hire Ms. Brandy Stearman as a new assistant principal at Bowie Elementary. So I have a motion, do I have a second? A second. All right, we have a motion and a second to name Brandy Stearman as the assistant principal at Bowie Elementary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So Brandy Stearman, congratulations. You are a new assistant principal at Bowie Elementary. All right, next item on the agenda is audience for guests. We do have um, audience for guests tonight, Mr. Daling Caldwell. So Mr. Caldwell, you can come up. I'm gonna read uh, the instruction for public comment. The CSD Board of Trustees encourages comments about the district from citizens of the district, from district employees, or from other members of the public. Anyone wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes per person. The board also respectfully requests that the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parents and staff members by name when addressing their concerns. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issue that are not posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. This means that the board members are unable to deliberate, ask questions, provide you with a response or take any action relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issue will be deferred until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought to employees, students, or parents may be brought in accordance with our local school board policy. Each of these processes provide that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as properly posted item agenda. Copies of our district policy on public participation in meetings and filing complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with these policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. So Mr. Caldwell, you will get three minutes. Uh, Mr. Farmer is going to keep time and we will start the time once you start speaking and then give you notice at one minute that you have remaining. All righty, I figured there'd be a lot more people here tonight, but I guess I am the only one. Uh, good evening, Madam President, Superintendent Howe, other distinguished members of the board. Um, I want to start by acknowledging you guys' thoughtful work that has been put into the proposed uh, cell phone policy. Uh, it's very clear that this policy aims to minimize the distractions and create a focused um, learning environment, and I fully support those goals. 
Um, however, I do have a couple concerns about the practical aspects of the enforcement. Uh, we live in a time, well, we all know we live in a time where cell phones are almost an extension of our children's hands. Uh, adjusting to this policy will be a significant change uh, for many students. My worry is that the teachers might find themselves spending valuable instructional time enforcing the policy instead of teaching. Uh, this could lead to disruptions in the classroom and take away from the quality of education, uh, the quality of education our students receive. Another concern is the consistency of the actual enforcement. Often we see policies enforced strictly at the beginning of the school year only for that enforcement to weaken throughout the year or throughout uh, as the year goes on. This inconsistency uh, can send mixed messages to our students and undermine uh, the policy's effectiveness. I urge that the board, I urge the board um, ensure that the policy is consistently enforced across all schools and throughout the entire school year. Finally, I ask that the board review how much instructional time is potentially being lost to the need to enforce this policy, especially as the school year progresses. If we find significant time is being wasted, we may need to reassess our approach. In conclusion, um, I want you to know I fully support the intent of the cell phone policy, but I do ask that the board consider these concerns and take steps to ensure it is implemented in a way that truly benefits our students without uh, detracting uh, their learning. Thank you all for your time and consideration. May God continue to bless you all and go Tigers. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Next on our agenda is discussion, action items. Oh, sorry, it's our superintendent report. Thank you. Uh, teachers returned last Thursday. That was their first day on campus. And then we had a fun convocation day on Friday. We had Jeremy Anderson, he was our speaker, and we had a pep rally style convocation. And I think uh, it was a hit, and we all had a good time that day. Um, and then this week we have meet the teacher on wednesday night we have all elementary campuses from 5 30 to 6 30. on thursday collins open, uh, meet the teacher is from 5 to 6. corsicana middle school is 5 30 to 6 30. Uh, freshman cub camp is august the 7th from 8 30 a.m to 11 a.m at chs uh, sophomore pick up for their uh, schedules is Wednesday 1 to 3 p.m. Juniors Thursday 9 to 11 and seniors Thursday 1 to 3 and then of course a week from today is our first day of school and we are excited to welcome back our students and have a great school year thank you all right thank you Miss Hal and again convocation was uh, a lot of fun I had a lot of positive um, response to it and a lot of great things um, that new teachers that I know and that have come to our district were, were really excited about it. So thank you for putting together a great convocation. All right, next on our agenda, dis under discussion and action items, we have our district cell phone policy. Thank you, Madam President, Ms. Howe, members of the board. Uh, I'm gonna just quickly uh, attempt to give you a short review of what we talked about previously and a little bit of an addition that we've made to the policy since the last time that we spoke. Uh, it's it's a, uh, a, a fluid plan that at the elementary level uh, basically takes the cell phone, phone away from the students or has them put it away for the day in its entirety. They can have it before school and after school but at no point in time during the school day. However, uh, I'm a parent, I'm, uh, most of us in the room are parents. Uh, it's, a, it's a good tracking device for our kids. It's a good monitoring device for safety and our kids having those cell phones as well. So we don't want to take that away. Uh, we just don't want it to be a piece going on during the instruction. Uh, we do think it's our responsibility to teach our kids how to use these phones. Uh, I believe that it is, an ad, it is absolutely an extension of the arm of, of a young person. Uh, in today's time and all the more reason for us to make them understand how to minimize that uh, and allow themselves to focus outside of that extension of their arms and use it responsibly. Uh, as, as they can continue into uh, seventh and eighth grade, students will be permitted to use their electronic devices before and after school and during a de uh, designated lunch period 
and then into high school, they will be uh, allowed to do the same as well as the passing periods. Now, right now, we're at 45 minute class periods at the high school. Uh, it is less than an hour. I do not think that it is a big ask. And I think to think that, uh, that it would be a major disruption to ask our students to do this uh, would be not giving our kids enough credit. I really, really do. Uh, one of the things that we're adding to the policy is that all CISD teachers and staff are required to adhere to the policy. Uh, we're presenting at the campus level this week. I've already spoken to four campuses uh, that I presented to today over, over that piece of the policy, uh, that if we move forward with it, that they will be held accountable to consistently enforce that. Uh, I totally agree that anything but consistency is bad for our kids uh, and, 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 and would not be good to put anything into place that we're not going to hold true to. Uh, the other thing that we put in there we wanted a piece about was that smart watches are permitted. <laughs> However, they're not allowed for communication purposes. Uh, if they become an issue and they're messaging through them, then they'll be, they'll be uh, directed the same way that a student with a cell phone would be. Um, I don't think cell phones are going away. I think they're going to continue to grow. That's kind of the consensus uh, of, of our district administration. We have to grow our students and we have to teach them uh, how to maintain and focus along with controlling the need to use that cell phone. We've all, everybody in this room's got a cell phone. I said this the last time I spoke. I can assure you we've all checked them since we've been in this room, which would be less than 45 minutes. Um, it's something that's going to be a change for them, but I, but I do think that it's a good move for instruction. Uh, their teachers will have to come up with classroom strategies uh, and, and guide them through that without drawing a hard line in the dirt. Um, I don't anticipate a lot of behavioral issues from this with the understanding that a student that has a phone out and has to be redirected and does so is not a discipline issue, does not deserve a placement in our opinion. A student that refuses to adhere to that policy, that is a discipline issue, uh, that, that may be uh, a placement at the end of the day, depending on the situation. They're not, not any two discipline issues are going to be the exact same set of circumstances and, and we're prepared to take that on. Our administrators understand that. They're going to have to support our teachers and hold them accountable at the same time if we move forward with this. Um, and we're kind of unanimous on the cabinet. We think our student body, we think they can handle this. Uh, we're not, we're not uh, silly enough to think that there might be an alteration to that if we get to mid-semester and there are issues with this plan, then we go right back to the table and develop a plan that is good for our kids and our staff. Uh, Ms. Howe spoke to me about that today, that we are, we are going to be very intentional about revisiting it and seeing how that's going along the way. Are there any questions? Just to clarify, this is the original policy that was in place prior to bring your own device, and that was implemented 10 years ago plus? Yes, ma'am. So, you know, as, as, as good of, of an idea as this sounds, uh, BYOD, bring your own device, was equally as good of an idea back then uh, as cell phones and devices exploded onto the scene. We could get them in school and use them as part of instruction uh, and save money uh, through students having their own, their own devices a lot of the time as well. We're now equipped that, that we can monitor and assign these devices and not uh, have their personal devices dictate any of the classroom time that's going on. The current uh, board policy that's in place uh, has never changed from prior to BYOD. It does allow us to collect those cell phones, hold the students accountable uh, for the rules and guidelines that go with them, and, and uh, allows us to charge uh, for the return of those cell phones after the first time that they're taken up. Right. So now that we have, um, we're one-to-one -one as far as laptops at our middle school and high school, um, and then our elementary school and intermediate, uh, they have, they're one-to-one -one as well. Yes, Because um, I know that was a, a concern for, for parents is that we didn't have the capability or the technology in place, and we do. We do have that, and so especially uh, since we went through COVID and had to have it. Um, so I think it's not, we're not recreating something or creating something new. This is the actual policy that was in place. 
we have just we're going to bring it back to light and reinforce it because of the challenges that we see um, with our testing scores uh, and our priorities to educate our kids and we have to take away any distraction um, that could impair them from learning um, and you know not give them the best opportunity to you know get the, the education that we're trying to give them so anybody have any comments I, I would like to add that I don't we don't anticipate a lot of change at the elementary level uh, in terms of this there'll be there'll be some students that have to be redirected and get used to the policy but as a whole not not a lot according to our uh, elementary administrators and teachers uh, the the intermediate there will be some change there'll be some change for the teachers in terms of not allowing that there'll be some changes for the students but our students are pretty good about doing what we tell them as long as it is consistent um, the high school it's a change I just I, I'm I'm very, very anxious to see I think it's almost going to be a little bit of a relief to a lot of our students without them even knowing uh, to get that time away from the phone uh, I think it's needed and I think it'll be good for them as well as instruction and I know that another concern for parents was uh, being able to communicate so at the elementary level we have what's called class dojo um, and so the parent can message the teacher directly is that you want to talk about that yeah. with class dojo the parent can message directly with that teacher I mean of course that teacher may or may not have her phone on her at that time but they do have that access or they can email the teacher or they can call directly to the school and leave a message for that student as well and then at the middle school and high school level since our students do have laptops they do have an email address so their parents would be able to email them throughout the day um, and you know connect with them that way as well as directly through calling the front office um, or emailing the teacher uh, another concern was that safety concern um, not being able to get in contact with them in the event that something happened a lockdown so what uh, I know we have a very good communication department and when things happen uh, we do send out texts and calls so you can you talk about all the all the things that we have in place to notify parents in the event of a lockdown yeah we have a mass communication system uh, Raymond actually just sent a, a big mass communication out to everyone that says you know if you didn't receive this please let us know sign up with us uh, personally because I was a parent with the kids here I get uh, mass communication through text email and I think I get a phone call as well so you would get all three of those things um, of course we would post that on social media which is where most parents get a lot of their information from us so we would post that immediately if something happens on a campus so that our parents are well informed uh, another question that was asked to me was what if my student needs to get a hold of me uh, we're going to handle that on a case-by-case -case basis if there's an emergency or an issue or a student has an anxiety attack you know there's a there's a hundred reasons i can stand here and think of those students will be allowed uh, un un until they prove they're not doing what they're saying that they're going to do to go to the counselor's office or the principal's office to make a phone call that's warranted so i would encourage parents if they didn't receive texts phone calls all the all the ways that we have i know i did last year that they need to be sure and have the correct phone number and be signed up correct email all the things because if you're not getting that communication you as the parent or guardian did not update your information to receive it and, and we can post something for parents to understand how they can update through skyward and get their phone number and email address and all that updated and mr bullware I see I see three ex high school principals right I see a ex middle school principal I see an ex elementary principal and and you, you can tell us and tell the town good teachers were already enforcing this policy to begin with correct absolutely uh, good teaching is good classroom management at the at the end of the day and the ones that were managing their classrooms appropriately already this they were, would not be an obstacle for them. this was all they were already essentially doing this yes, sir. so that's all all right i have a question um it's a technology question if every child has the 
laptop in their room, uh, in their room with them. Um, are we doing any checks, or have we done checks to make sure they're working properly? So, right when we get to school, there's consistency with it, and they're not having to use their phones. Right. So every. Or And we do have IT representatives on every campus. So, for example, at the high school, I know how many? Two? Two at the high school. Two at the high school. One at the new school. Uh, one at our intermediate. And then our tech apps. And it's on the other campuses. Right. So in the event they have an issue at the high school with their laptop, they can take it to our IT um, representatives and, and get that addressed. So. I have one other question about that. These laptops are staying in the classroom and not going with the students right. per, to each room or home. Yes, ma'am. Correct. It's a, it's a classroom set, so there will be a new machine as they send it. Okay. Any any other discussion? All right. Thank you, Mr. Bowyer. Yes, thank you. All right, next on our agenda is district staff development plan and summer staff development report. Good evening, Ms. Howell, Madam President, and members of the board. I'm going to briefly just review um, what we've been up to with staff development over the summer and moving into the school year. Um, we offered 29 planning sessions this summer across all grade levels and um, subject areas. So the focus of those planning sessions was on instructional alignment of their resources and with their assessments. Those were led by Dr. Harl, myself, and our instructional coaches. We had Savage training for our new science adoption. Our dual language campus was trained again on Gomez and Gomez. They're receiving a formal training on that, which they will be finishing up this week. We did send six teachers plus one instructional coach to CAMP, which is the Conference for the Advancement of Mathematics Teaching. That was in Houston, so that was an honor that they got to go to that. Um, of course, all the staff members have been participating in their annual compliance training that they have to do every summer. Um, all the administrative team was trained on PLCs at the beginning of the summer, and then we had another administrative team at the middle school that went to the PLC Institute on top of that. Um, one of the most important trainings that we had that I left off on the bullet, and I can't believe I did that, was the Lead Forward Trainer of Trainings, or Trainer of Trainers Training, it's a mouthful, that was three days in July, and we offered that to 20 of our teachers that are going to serve as our mentor teachers this year. Um, and so that is working with Lead Forward on building essentially a teacher induction program for our district. And I'm going to expand on that just a little bit more on one of the next slides. Um, last week we had new teachers, so we welcomed all of our new teachers back to the district, and that was two days on Monday and Tuesday. They were trained on T-Test, Canvas, and then we had 15 teacher leaders lead breakout sessions where they were able to get teachers acquainted with their new curriculum resources, HMH, Saxon, Saxon Stenscopes. Um, we offered differentiated classroom management sessions for our newer teachers. Teachers were trained on DMAC. There was um, best practices for instructional strategies. They were getting their hands dirty and learning how to write um, lesson plans using our lesson plan template. And one of our favorite sessions that we had really good feedback on was um, Brianna White at the high school did a session at the very end of the day and it was talking about using those best instructional practices in the classroom, but she connected it back to like the Corsicana kid and how that looks for like the demographics of our students in Corsicana. So there was a lot of really good feedback on that. Um, this week we are offering lots of training. We have lots of things going on. Um, this week specifically, tomorrow, we have all teachers that teach ELAR science and social studies from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade that are being trained on the Jane Schaefer writing um, process. So we're really excited about that. The kinder through fourth grade teachers that did not receive the science training back in the summer are also going to be trained on that on Wednesday morning. We have Writable, which is another supplemental writing um, program for our secondary teachers, as well as Alex, which is a math um, uh, online platform 
And then we're going to finish up our Gomez and Gomez training for our dual language campuses, as well as Age of Learning, which is our um, adaptive curriculum for K through five in reading and math. So um, also, Dr. Hall and I met with all those mentor teachers that I talked about that had the three-day lead forward training back in July. And so we've put together kind of a sustainable plan for um, supporting our zero to one year teachers as the year goes on. And so some of those things that they talked about in that training, we are going to have six sessions where those mentor teachers will actually lead those sessions. And it's gonna cover things like developing the learning environment and classroom management, building relationships and behavior management, professional communication with students, staff, and parents. There'll be some time for reflection, which is really important. Um, there will be a session on planning, connecting standards and instruction, developing the lesson, and then engaging every student. So our plan is to have three in the fall and three in the spring, and then the mentors are going to lead those, those sessions, and then over the next couple weeks until the next session, what they will be doing with their mentees is essentially supporting them on the learning that happened during those professional development sessions. And of course, as the year goes on, I'm sure there will be other needs and things that arise as far as professional development goes. How many, how many zero to one year teachers do we have this year? Oh, I don't have an exact number. We have about, I think it's about 40. 40, yeah. Okay. Some campuses have a heavy number of them right. more than others. Right. Yeah. 10%. Mm -hmm. Any All other right. questions? All right, thank, okay. you. thank you. Next on the agenda is summer school review. All right. Good evening, Ms. Howell, Ms. Roman, members of the board. All right. Okay, real quick on the summer school update. This is just giving you guys some of the information that you already have had before about the summer school. Uh, week one, week two, week three, we did have three weeks of summer school. However, that second week it was just only two days and then we rolled into EOC testing. Um, we did provide breakfast and lunch for those students. And the reason why that we did hold summer school was for uh, students that were, there was non-attendance and well as academic performance. Um, you can see, I think that if you have a copy of those attendance by grade level, you, you'll notice that first grade high numbers and then we as you start to move down it's pretty consistent with second through eighth grade um, and then as you move over into high school you have um, about 90 ish and you can also notice that history you're probably wondering why only seven we had right at 96 percent pass rate on history so there wasn't the, the need there as it was in english um, and then bio 2 had 30. Um, and that also, by the way, on the, the high school, they did have summer school, but they also offered sessions too for students to be able to come and do review sessions before they took, did take the EOCs. Um, so next up is summer school campuses and academic focus. So we have elementary. We did both with elementary, Collins, and then even middle school. The focus of those were all math and reading. So the teachers that we did ask to teach summer school they focused on math and reading only. Um, and then secondary, of course, because of the EOC test, we focused in the other areas as well. So that is it. Do you guys have any questions? All right, thank All right. you. All right. Next is review of the preliminary budget. All right. <clears throat> Uh, Madam President, Ms. Howell, board members, thank you. Um, in, in board book, it's basically the same presentation as last time. I updated some of the expense numbers at the end. But just to review, the revenue as of 731 was uh, $62,109,589. Is that, is that down from our last meeting, that number? No. No, it's, it's the same. same. Yep, okay. yep, yep. And okay. I do have some news on updates coming in okay uh, but we will do that at the end <clears throat> summary of the revenue um, if you remember I included the attendance rates la uh, this time as well uh, just like last time and we are where I think we started the uh, school status is that what it's called 
the status, so the attendance program. If you get to the end, uh, the expenses went up, um, and that was due to the uh, substitute. Uh, the lines were not filled in at the last meeting, so we filled those in, and they are good to go. So that did go up our expenses. Our revenue was coming in. Um, we should have final numbers. I will have them ready for you on Friday. Uh, I think that's all. That's the only update. It's a pretty, pretty short update. One thing I would like that we did discuss at our last meeting, and just for those that um, are watching, um, we talked about projected enrollment and yes. how we do we have kind of an idea of how many enrolled that we have on the books for this year? Uh, we're probably at 60, six, six, right at 6,100, I believe, Scott. Is that right? Yeah. Right at 6,100. So we have the staff uh, for 6,100 students to attend school every day, regardless if they are there. Um, so we're paying those salaries. We're paying for electricity, bus drivers, all the things. And then if only 92.5% of those students show up, that's 5,600 students. Yes. So 5,600 students minus 6,100 is 500 students that we are not receiving money for Correct. from the state. That is an elementary school. Correct. So basically, we are not being funded for an elementary school Correct. for the year. Correct. 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 And you see on the news every day that Plano and Richardson and all, all the school districts have their closing schools. Correct. Because they don't have the funds to operate, so they're consolidating down. Correct. Correct. So I, just, I wanted to bring that point out because that, that is uh, eye opening when, if you aren't familiar with uh, school finance, that um, we are paid based on attendance. So please get your kids to school so we can pay our bills, pay our teachers and not be in a $2.8 million deficit um, that we can, you know, hopefully come out of that um, with attendance improving and with our governor and uh, state representatives passing legislation that would increase our funding because it has not been increased since 2019 and we have a lot of things that have gone up drastically like insurance for our facilities and our vehicles and buses has gone up drastically our health insurance has gone up it will it's at 399 it's going to go up 47 dollars this year um, and we as a board pride on ourselves on being able to pay 100 percent of the insurance for our staff because that it, you know that is that equates to about five thousand a year um, that they, you know, that we are taking care of for them because we want them to have health insurance. We want them to take care of themselves, but it's also a recruiting tool because insurance is expensive. And um, but I don't know if we're going to be able to do that going into looking at the numbers, um, unfortunately. So get your kids to school every day, five days a week for the whole school year. Mr. Kays. Um is the appraisal district coming back with numbers? Yes, we've submitted them to TEA and Region 12. So and on Friday, I will have updated at our subcommittee meeting. I'll have updated revenue numbers. But it's looking, it's looking okay, or yes, okay. yes, a little bit, a little bit more than last year, it looks like. So. And I just want to say that our team is working really hard to try to figure out this deficit budget. Um, for instance, an example today was brine and trash bags. So it's minor things that cost a lot of money. I had no idea how much trash bags cost. Brian, you want to tell us? Uh, Just you know, for example, like school, I think and their budget for the whole year is about $8,500 for custodial supplies. Well, when 8,000 of it is going straight to trash bags and only $500 is left for their you know, toilet paper, cleaning supplies, things like that. So those are the things, those are the conversations we're having on a daily basis, looking at our insurance, looking at custodial supplies, maintenance supplies. Uh, everything has just increased in price so much that, you know, that's kind of where we're at right now, just trying to make sure we can take care of our buildings and our kids with simple things like trash bags. Yeah. 
Right, and we, we have developed uh, or put together a committee, finance committee uh, with several board members and then um, our cabinet staff so that we can dig into um, our expenses and, and look at things where we can cut back. Um, and, and so we are working very diligently on that. Um, but again, we have a lot of increases that we are out of our control. And so we need, we need the state to step up and give us money. Um, and hopefully, you know, TEA will also help on their end because they determine our tax rate. They determine the rate that we are allowed to charge, or say charge, that uh, our tax assessor collector is able to collect on our behalf, so. Yes, and I'll have those numbers as well. And please don't forget, we saved money for five years. We saved for a rainy day, and guess what? It's raining. So let's remember that. Well, and also, if everybody's listening to TV, they're here, and we're like Houston. You know, they're they're in a different, totally different bracket than we are. They're they're in the B in shortfall, and so uh, we're. It, I know everybody thinks we're the Lone Rangers down here, but it's it's all over the state of Texas, so uh, it, it's it's bad. I, I would assume almost every 95 percent of districts are having to pass a deficit budget this year from what we've seen talking to other board members at conferences so um thank you thank you, thank you. all right next item on the agenda is review the updated ttes appraiser list good evening miss howell uh miss roman and other board members uh tonight i'm gonna uh i'm gonna present the t-test appraiser list one thing that I'll bring to your attention on that list in your board book, it says pending. Pending means their pending their names are pending in DMAC, and we're getting all that taken care of this week. So they will all have a yes by their name. But that's the list of uh, T test appraisers this year in CISD. Any questions about that? All right. My next uh, thing is the employee handbook. Every year, Scott, been, hang on one second. Oh, <laughs> oh, there you go. So it's, okay. This is an action item. Okay. Approve the 2024 2025 TTS appraiser list as presented. Second. So I have a motion and a second to approve the 2024 25 TTS appraiser list as presented. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. That passes. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. Next thing is uh, TASB every year updates our uh, employee handbook. And tonight I'm just going to go through the, the big changes in the employee handbook. Um, under For probationary contracts this year, local consideration edited the suggestion about including information on DOI exemption, uh, exemptions to the 5 of 8 rule. Paychecks, they added a statement regarding employees' responsibility to review the accuracy of their pay statements at the end of first paragraph. Payroll deductions and overpayments, they added an explanation of overpayment and the repayment process. There's a, uh, an addition on quarantine leave for peace officers and emergency medical technicians. They also changed the leave for police officers for illness and injury. Uh, I think the biggest thing, harassment of students, they added a policy DF as it pertains to termination of employees for certain offenses against students. In the fourth paragraph, edited list of policy and regulations applicable to this topic. And local considerations added reference to policy DF and edited provisions related to Title IX. They also, in the tobacco and nic nicotine area uh, and e-cigarette use, added and nicotine to the topic uh, to include nicotine patches. And then they updated the asbestos management plan. Other than that, our employee handbook stays the same. We changed our local things in there, but uh, we had no changes this year on the local level. So I would ask that this get approved also. I move that we approve the 2024-2025 employee handbook as presented. Second. So I have a motion is second to approve the 2024-25 employee handbook as presented. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, that passes. Thank you. All right, next 
we are going to review and approve the 2024-2025 student code of conduct. Okay. Good evening, Mrs. Howe, Madam President, and board members. I am here to present the 2024-2025 student code of conduct for board approval. A couple things I'll say is we did not have any major changes. Uh, there were no new state mandates. Of course, we updated any, any names um, and dates. And also, this does reflect the new uh, cell phone policy, the proposed new phone cell phone policy in alliance with that. And that is on page 39 of your student code of conduct if you wanted to look at that. And other than that, that is all I have, unless you have any questions. I move that we approve the 2024-2025 student code of conduct as presented. Second. So I have a motion and second to approve the 2024-2025 student code of conduct as presented. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. That Thank passes. You. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, we have the consent agenda. So I have a motion and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? All right. The consent agenda is approved. And I believe that we have come to the conclusion of this meeting. So we are going to move into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551-01.